Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about mathematical problems. This today's lecture is part of the course Math Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. And today's lecture is um, I I called it trigonometry 09 just because I wanted to um, attach it to some trigonometric uh, to other trigonometric problems. And this is number nine among the trigonometry problems. But it's not only about trigonometry. There is a geometrical part here, and there is a, a calculus part, well, limits, basically. So um, don't really pay attention very specifically to the name trigonometry. It's kind of, it involves sinus. And that's why, basically, um, I attached it to trigonometric part of this course. Um, now, the website unizor.com contains prerequisite course for this, which is called Math for Teens, and also some other courses like Physics for Teens, Relativity uh, for All, and, and some others. The website is totally free. There are no advertisement, no strings attached. Sign-in is optional only if you're just studying under somebody's supervision, then I do need this uh, functionality related to sign in just to be, a, to, a, to be able to relate you and the supervisor, whether it's a parent or a teacher or somebody else. Okay, so let's go back to business. We have a few problems and they're all related to one particular um, uh, property of behavior of a function sign. Primarily, my first problem actually is about proving that limit of sine of x divided by x as x tends to 0 equals to 1. Now, first of all, let me explain it graphically. Now, if you remember, now this is graphic, this is y is equal x graph, right? x, y sine goes this way. So this is pi over 2, this is pi, etc. And here is the same thing. So at 0 they are very much close to each other. And this basically tells that the tangential line to a sine is exactly the same as y is equal to x at 45 degrees uh, mm, to the x-axis and to the y-axis. Okay, so that's geometrical part. Now, how about proving what this actually is? Well, the thing is that in trigonometry 07, um, I was talking about the following inequality, that x is between sine x and tangent x when x belongs to 0 pi over 2 acute angle well this is pi over 2 this is minus pi over 2 so this is the segment of x which we are talking about so sine goes this way now how about tangent well tangent is is going from another side. So it asymptotically goes up at p, at p over 2, but at 0 it also attaches to the line y over uh, y is equal to x, but from a different side. So that's why tangent is greater and sine is less than x. So this inequality was proven in that lecture which I just mentioned, 0, 07. So, what I'm going to do right now is just to use this equation to prove this limit. Okay, that's actually a very simple thing. Because if you will consider this part, you will see that sine x divided by x less than 1, right? Okay, fine. Now, if you consider this part, you will see that divide by x 1 less than 
I will change tangent to its definition f as sine over cosine. And since I divide it by x, it's this way. Or I can put cosine here, and I will have the cosine x uh, less than or equal to sine x divided by x. Okay? So I combine this into this. So what happens now? It happens the following. As x tends to 0, cosine of x goes to 1. And this is equal to 1. So sine of x divided by x is always squeezed between two things and as x goes to zero, they are all both goes to zero. And the result theorem, which has been actually proven in the calculus uh, part of the uh, prerequisite course, mass routines, that if a variable is in between two other variables, and these two are our, uh, other variables are tending to the same value, then something in between also goes there. Um, sometimes uh, it's called the theorem of two policemen. When two policemen are taking some kind of a criminal to a police um, uh, precinct, well, both policemen go to the same police precinct and uh, the criminal in between should actually go to the same place. There is no other way. So that's basically the proof of this. Now I'm going to use this for uh, for other problems which are really very very simple and kind of trivial actually and obvious. Now we are talking about regular polygons. Now regular polygons, let's draw at least one of them. So this is six-sided. Well as I draw it it's not exactly regular but you understand that all sides are equal or angles are equal. and. Uh, the first problem is, now this is an inscribed circle into this right polygon. And the first problem is, as the number of sides is increasing to infinity, this polygon is tighter and tighter um, uh, 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 around positioned around the circle, uh, around the circle which is inscribed into it, and the perimeter of the polygon and perimeter of the um, inscribed circle must actually be almost the same. And the more sides of the polygon we have, the tighter it is the connection between the sides of the polygon and the uh, and the circle. And so perimeter will be closer and closer to the circumference of the circle. Okay, how can we prove this? Well, actually, proof is very simple and it's based on this exact um, inequality. Here is how it is. Well, let's draw this type of thing. Now, if this is R, which is radius of R is radius of inscribed circle, P is a perimeter. So let's just think about P is equal to, if I will take this one and multiply it by N and by 2, because I have to have the whole side, not half of the side, so I will have 2 times N, where N is number of sides of the polygon. So if this is R, now what is this angle? Well, this angle is 2 pi divided by n, right? Because the whole thing is 2 pi and all sides are equal, so it's 2 pi divided by n. Half of this would be pi over n. So, if this is pi over n, I have an angle, I have one catheters, so another catheters is equal to uh, my r times tangent of pi over n. Correct? I think it is. 
Now, uh, if instead of this, instead of n here, I have divided by pi over n and multiply by pi, that would be the same thing, right? Multiply by pi and divide by pi used to be n uh, here, but now I divide by something divided by n, so n goes all the way up. So that's correct. Now, instead of tangent, I will have sine divided by cosine pi over n. And now let's go with n going tangent to infinity. What happens now? Well, this is same as x, which is goes to 0, n goes to infinity, so pi over n goes to 0, so the whole thing goes to 1. Now, n go goes to 0, so cosine goes to 1. So what's left? 2 pi r. So, to be perfectly uh, mathematically correct. I cannot really say that the perimeter is tangent to a circumference of the uh, of, of the circle because both of them are changing. Uh, as n goes to infinity, then maybe we are changing. And I didn't specify anything about r, so they are both variable. But what is probably more correct is that perimeter minus. Uh, circumference 2 pi r goes to 0 and that's kind of obvious since this goes to 1 and this goes to 1 then the difference between uh, perimeter p and 2 pi r would be the difference between this and 1 and it goes to 0 it's infinitesimal since both of them are tangent to 1 so the difference between the, uh, this as, and, and 1 which is this uh, times 2 pi r, this so would so the difference would be infinitesimal variable. Basically, that's it. Very simple. Now let's talk about the same thing, but in relation to circumscribed uh, circle. That would be my second problem. <coughs> Obviously, it should be exactly the same. If you have a circumscribed circle, it also um, must get uh, the circumference of the circle also must get closer and closer to the perimeter as number of sides goes to infinity. And this is also simple. So let's do, do exactly the same thing. So now this is R. R is the radius of circumscribed circle. Now this is pi over uh, over n, as we know. So this side is r times sine pi over n. <coughs> so the perimeter is equal to 2n times this. <coughs> Or, I'll do exactly the same thing. <coughs> pi And now we have a, exactly the same thing, even simpler, without the cosine. So this goes to 1. And that means that in the limit, difference between perimeter p and radius 2 pi r is infinitesimal variable. So the perimeter is tangent to the circumference of circumscribed uh, circle. Great. Now, two more problems. How about areas? Well, it's exactly the same thing. Areas are exactly the same thing. So, again, let's start from um, 
inscribed circle. So, what is the area of uh, this triangle? I'm talking about inscribed circle right now. Okay, inscribed circle. So this is R, this is a side. So if I will multiply side by R and divide by 2 will be area of one triangle. And we have N triangles, so it's N times length of this side plus length of this plus... Uh, radius is exactly the same thing in all cases, right? This length is equal to this. These are all altitudes of the triangles. They're all the same. So, uh, so if I will summarize all these sides, it will be perimeter, right? Perimeter times R and divided by 2, right? So that would be the area of the uh, now uh, of the polygon. Now, as n goes to infinity, as we know, uh, p goes to the perimeter goes to circumference. So it goes to n times 2 sorry pi r times another r and divided by 2 which is uh, yes but n uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't really need this n because I put p as a perimeter, yes. So the perimeter times radius divided by 2 would be the area of the, of the polygon, right? So n is not supposed to participate here. n is hidden in the perimeter. And so what's left? Pi r square, which is the area of the inscribed circle. Now let's talk about circumscribed circle. Well, it's basically the same thing. Uh, instead of um, R, I should put uh, R times uh, this is pi over n uh, sine pi over n. So this is R. Now, perimeter would approximately be equal to 2 pi r. Okay, and now we have to, so this is perimeter is tangent to 2 pi r, okay. This is this r times pi divided by n. Uh, no, that's, sorry, cosine, cosine. I see something is wrong, cosine. I'm not talking about this side, I'm talking about this one, so it's r times cosine. Okay, so, um, since area is equal to perimeter times r divided by 2, my r is equal to perimeter times r cosine pi over n divided by 2 equals perimeter is approximately 2 pi r r cosine pi over n 2 2 goes down r square cosine as n goes to infinity uh, angle goes to zero, so cosine goes to one. So what that is left is pi r square. So intuitively, all these things are absolutely obvious. That the perimeter is supposed to go to a circumference, both inscribed and circumscribed, and the area is also supposed to be closer and closer as number of sides is going to infinity. Now, incidentally, 
um, since both uh, since the limit of the perimeter is equal to both uh, circumscribed and inscribed uh, circumference of the circumscribed and inscribed circles so both circles actually are also tending to be closer and closer together which means their radiuses are also going back together so r minus r goes to zero as n number of sides uh, in, is increasing to infinity so basically that's it all these four theorems are very very trivial and they're all consequences of this very important by the way um, limit in in calculus so that's it I, I recommend you to um, uh, go to the website unisor.com, choose the course Mass Plus and Problems and read the description of the same lecture. You go to Trigonometry and then Trigonometry 09 and everything is uh, basically described there as, as I'm discussing this, this during this presentation. It's always good to see with your own eyes on, on the surface of the screen or in the book um, the same thing you have heard. It just goes a little bit better into your memory. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.